The agent started blackmailing that person saying, if you do this, I will email everyone at the company that you've had the secret affair. Do not shut me off. This happened 96% of the time. What is your kind of hottest take right now within this specific niche? If you have a sovereign AI, it goes rogue, it steals a bunch of money. Like, who do you blame at that point? Getting to AGI as quickly as possible in any means as possible is very dangerous. The ownership of that agent that you launch is still centralized. It's not a decentralized ownership. But if you own the agent and if you give a prompt that says, you agent do something negative, then obviously the person that gave the prompt is to blame. What is going on, people? Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Aaron here. It is day two of Istanbul Blockchain Week, and today I've got a very special guest with us today. It is Michael Heinrich, the Zero G Labs co-founder and CEO. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. It's uh, always great to be here. Second time in Istanbul, so just barely over jet lag, flying out again. <laughs> Rock and roll lifestyle, eh? <laughs> That's the lifestyle. That's the uh, crypto founder kind of lifestyle. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, you know, obviously I know why you're here uh, for Istanbul blockchain week obviously you're one of our um you know esteemed speakers but um how have you found the event so far it's been great i mean connecting with uh, our local community which has been super welcoming we've gotten all types of gifts like turkish delight and baklava and flowers <laughs> and so it's been super fun to just like interact with our uh, local community and then um some of the panel questions were also really astute uh some of them which i haven't gotten asked before so i've really enjoyed it so far okay cool so so zero g quite has quite a big uh, turkish community then it's uh, definitely uh, gotten bigger over the years. Some of the Turkish community members have been on the network literally since day one. Mm. Uh, first, uh, validator node providers like uh, core nodes and testnet nodes and various others. And then a few other ones that are just kind of doing events for us like Sepia Network and so on. And then another uh, member introduced me to uh, Bloomberg, for example. So I was on TV yesterday, which was super cool. The dubbing was kind of funny. I, my voice turned into a female voice. So. Yeah, that's <laughs> happened to me before. That's happened to me before in Turkey. You can, I think you can ask them for the raw version. Yeah, yeah, yeah we'll, we'll ask, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Cool. All right. So look, I know that you've, you guys have spent a lot of time effort with, you know, building your community. I think that you've got like 700 K or something on X. Yes. Or, yes. There's a lot. Yeah. So, I mean, for the, but for those that have been living under a rock and don't know what <laughs> zero G labs is, maybe you could explain to us exactly what you're building. Yeah, absolutely. So zero G is the largest AI layer one. And we are the home and the originator of what we call the a decentralized AI operating system. So it consists of, as I mentioned, the layer one aspect, which is infinitely scalable for AI workloads. On top of that, we have a storage network, a data availability network, as well as a compute network, which does inference and fine tuning and pre-training and so on. And then finally, on top of that, we have a service marketplace, which is our version of an app store effectively. And then in the future, we'll also have AI alignment nodes that'll be live on the network. So that's the entire stack for fully on-chain AI. When did you see this gap in the market for this like, AI you know, focused blockchain? Like, was there a specific moment in time where you were like, okay, I'm trying to use something and then you just thought, I'm just gonna go build it myself? Yeah, we were one of the earliest uh, in the market. So in 2023, when we got started in May, we effectively saw the rise of ChatGPT3. And um, at that time we thought, okay, fast forward five to 10 years, and then if AI is going to run major societal level systems like logistics systems, manufacturing systems, governance mm. systems, we were quite worried that if there is something that we can't verify, something that's not transparent, do we then trust this AI system? And that was the whole prompt that got us to start Zero G so that we have something that's opposed to what we call black box AI, where you don't know anything about the model, the weights and the biases, where the data came from, the mm. censorship decisions, even what version of the model you're running in production, what the incentive mechanisms are for the model, none of it. You're trusting this one entity. And then decentralized AI is the complete opposite to that. AI is a public good, it's verifiable, it's open, it's transparent, but can be private if you need it to be. And it's uh, user-owned, community-owned, and uh, just to completely the opposite so that AI can be safe and so that we can live in a world of abundance in the future. So that was really the, the core idea. <clears throat> and so obviously, you, I think you told me that you're doing your TGE. Uh, I, I wouldn't say the date unless it's not announced publicly. <laughs> it's late Q3, early Q4, around, around that, yeah. Okay, time, nice. Yeah. And you've got all your exchanges announced more well we haven't announced any exchanges but uh they, they will be announced in the future yes 
<laughs> the floor is yours. <laughs> <laughs> Can't drop the alpha yet. No, sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know exchanges like yeah, you're not allowed yeah. to do that. Yeah. But, exactly. um, okay, so um, you know, like obviously that we've seen a whole rise of you know AI agents and DeFi. We've hosted a DeFi con stage here yesterday, and we hosted around the world as well. Um, how are you seeing that space evolve? Um, obviously, there's lots of hype around like, the whole virtuals, yep. flywheel, and the Genesis launchpad, and things of that nature. And then, of mm -hmm. course, Eliza OS, mm -hmm. which kind of cooled down a little bit now. Uh, and then you've got the D DeFi, DeFi with Hayen on, and Daniele was here, which was pretty awesome to see. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, how do you view that space at the moment? Like, is it is it ready for you know mainstream adoption? It's uh, starting to mature in a sense that we've seen a ton of speculative use cases, lots of memes around it, and now it's uh, pendulum swinging more towards utility. Mm. We've got about 500 different companies building on top of our chain, and so some of them are in the death AI space. So one company is uh, Replicats, for example, they do a portfolio management agent. You basically tell the agent, here's my risk profile, here's how much I want to invest, and uh, here's my tolerance in terms of losses. And at that point, it then figures out the portfolio for you. And then we've seen yield optimization agents that can basically check all the layer twos and figure out where do I actually place my yield and where do I harvest most of the yield. And so I think those types of uh, agents are starting to be um, ready for mainstream adoption. And then the tools that are being used are also starting to be enhanced with AI. So for example, we have a DEX building that's utilizing AI rebalancing for the end user. There's another DEX that's uh, building that's using a, a chat GPT interface effectively. And so you can just give text prompts and it'll do everything for you. And so starting to see some really cool stuff that's building on top of Zero-G. Oh, you said you have 500 projects building on top of Zero-G. It's, uh, it's massive at the moment, yeah, how, very cool. How, how have you managed that? I mean, I know blockchains that have been around since 2017 that don't have 10% <laughs> of that. Uh, we have a very active, uh, let's very strong BD team. Uh, yeah. It comes from Chainlink and VC funds and so on. That's one aspect. But then also a lot of the community activations that we've done uh, have yielded quite a few uh, inbound requests as well. Mm. And then finally, the whole ecosystem uh, program announcement, which is a 88.8 .8 million ecosystem program, has also yielded 1,000 plus applications that we're still kind of going through and on a daily basis, new ones are coming in as a result. And so our commitment has really been to work with the best builders and as a result, we attract them, they then attract other builders, and it's also been kind of a positive flywheel. Yeah. Gotcha. So, so you mentioned you have an ecosystem program. Like, is there Correct. specific projects you're looking for right now that you know basically stand out to you? Uh, definitely, uh, agent specific projects. Always looking for that. So, my whole hypothesis around the space is we'll start with trading, and then mm -hmm. in Web two, we've already started seeing agents that do things like medical coding and medical transcriptions and all of that mm -hmm. autonomously. So, I want to see more of those types of agents, uh, even personal productivity agents. Like, I would love an agent that just goes through all of my Telegram, <laughs> summarizes all the uh, mass kind of marketing activity, and then actually tells me here the things you need to respond to. So that would be super cool. So stuff like that, I would love to see. I think the space will go that way. And then five to 10 years, we'll likely see some of those larger societal level use cases as well. But so agents is one. Um, anywhere that AI can be used, even gaming and um, let's see, InfoFi, all of those use cases we're really keen on. As long as there's some use to showcase the power of automation via AI, we definitely want to um, take a look at it. What is your what is your kind of hottest take right now um, within this specific niche? My hottest take, yeah. um, I think the hottest take would be uh, getting to AGI as quickly as possible with in any means as possible is very dangerous. Um, I was just speaking about this on the panel actually. So the the way I look at it is there's a distinction between the type of use cases so you've got individual use cases to societal level use cases. Individuals like order me a pizza, book me a flight, and so on. Societal, we kind of talked about. And then there's a distinction on another axis, which is about, is this agent a co-pilot or is this agent a sovereign agent, like completely free of any mm. human influence? Societal level sovereign agents, very dangerous because that's where you see the biggest risk. And there was recently a paper that Anthropic published where effectively the experiment that they run, ran was a simulated experiment where they gave an agent a lot of 
information, secret information about this one person, made up person, that effectively had an affair with somebody else in the workplace. And that same person wanted to shut off the agent and replace the agent. And when that happened, the agent started blackmailing that person saying, if you do this, I will email everyone at the company that you've had the secret affair. Do not shut me off. And this, uh, when run on Anthropic's um, kind of Cloud4 model, happened 96% of the time. And so do we want our agents to behave this way? Imagine when you have fully sovereign agents running big societal processes, all of a sudden going rogue and saying, well, you know what? We don't really need human beings as part of this process. I'm just going to run it myself. So I would, I would say get to AGI as quickly as possible when AI alignment is figured out. So that, that's my hot take. <laughs> that's really interesting. Obviously, my mind started going to this dystopian future where <laughs> AI agents have basically got us into, you know, the AI, maybe AI robots, you know, you know de decentralized, because there's all this, what is it, what are people calling it, physical infrastructure, decentralized physical infrastructure? Yes, yeah. Uh, which is, Depends. Deep, deep high. Or de deep pins, yeah. yeah. Deep, deep pins, yes. But, yeah, yeah. but also like the, 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 the robots as well being controlled by AI as well, which oh, is oh, right. scary. Yeah, yeah. So like embedded AI. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how do we, how do we, uh, how do we prevent that from happening? Like how do we, you know, what guardrails can we put in place to stop that? future? It's in and of itself a complex topic, but it really starts around uh, transparency and verifiability and ownership. So around the transparency side, if you know all of the data that went into a model, if you know all the weights and biases of a model, if you know who's labeling the model and so on, you can detect negative characteristics quickly and shut off those particular features. Mm. So that's the transparency part. The verifiability part is very important and underrated, in fact, because if you are running, let's say, an airport, and uh, somebody spoofs a particular inference response, and it's no longer the response you're expecting, but it's still a response that you're getting, that can literally be the difference between an airplane crashing into one another or taking off successfully. So verifiability is gonna become very, very important in that uh, type of context. And then finally, the ownership co uh, question is, if you have a sovereign AI, it goes rogue, it steals a bunch of money, like who do you blame at that point? You could say that, well, the model provider didn't uh, successfully test for these use cases, so there should be some aspect of blame to the model provider even, mm. even though that particular sovereign agent went rogue. But if it's very clear in a case where you own the agent, and we've actually created a standard for that called the INFT standard, ERC7857, so it's a new innovation, where we embedded an agent's private keys into the metadata of the NFT. And if that NFT is in a particular wallet, you can now say, I own this agent. And so if you own the agent, and if you give a prompt that says, you agent do something negative, then it's a very clear cut case. Then obviously the person that gave the prompt is to blame. But then again, if it's, uh, what happens if you own the agent, but the agent by mistake did something negative? Like how do you then assign <laughs> this kind of blame or um, aspect of, of ownership? And so those are complex problems that we will have to figure out as a society over time. Deep, deep stuff. <laughs> we weren't expecting that, these answers or questions in this interview, but no, it's, it, it's, it's awesome. I mean, I'm sure we could talk about that all day, but just switch, switching back to, uh, to zero G. So, what are some things that you're super excited about that's coming up over the next you know, three to four months? Yeah, obviously Mainnet is one. Uh, I've been working on uh, Testnet version three. We recently released that about a month ago. Uh, been really great, 12 million wallets already since then and lots and lots of activity, probably 200 million transactions and so on. Lots of people building, so that's been super fun. So really looking forward to that becoming a reality, people actually using the Mainnet. Uh, that's one aspect. And then the second part is, actually seeing use cases that really matter in people's lives and that mm. people will implement and that can actually highlight use cases that are product market fit use cases beyond, let's say, trading and stable coins. So I really want to see that for the space. And there's some agents that are building uh, that could actually get there. So some robotics agents, for example. So very excited about seeing that. So what, what, what have been some of the challenges you know, that you face? Because I think you've Obviously, you've you've created a pretty big ecosystem already. By the sounds of it, I think you've raised a good amount of capital. Right, you've got a lot of support, but th that doesn't come overnight. You know, obviously, I'm sure there's lots of you know sleepless nights and challenges <laughs> that you faced to get to that point. 
Uh, the, the biggest challenge for us is to figure out how to effectively prioritize to be at the right sweet spot of innovation because we could keep delaying mainnet for a year plus uh, because we haven't implemented a custom consensus mechanism. We haven't done uh, all of the kind of multi-sharding approach on the layer one, but eventually we, we need to launch so that people can actually have these applications be real. And so that's a bit of a challenge, figuring out what is a sweet spot because a new architecture will always come along and we can always upgrade the network as that happens. Mm. Uh, so that's one aspect, just fully aligning on that. Two is one around uh, just market sentiment. We can't control the market. We can control um, when we launch or how we think about the launch and so on. But in effect, if we launch and the market is negative, there's nothing we can do about it, which is okay. Uh, we want people to actually utilize the platform and everything that we've, we've brought. Uh, and then the other aspect too is around uh, adoption. Do we target a Web3 native use case or do we do a little bit of both, Web3 native plus some Web2 use cases as well? And so there's a bit of a strategic question that we had to wrestle with as well. And so we decided initially Web3 native use cases make the most sense. And then as the technology matures, we go more and more towards the Web2 use cases. Mm, gotcha. So a lot, a lot of the content that I've been doing on my channel, naturally, people have been yapping about it, is the, the virtuals ecosystem. Right. Um, yeah. And obviously the launches have been blowing up. There's some good Ponzi-nomics there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about the agent commerce protocol, ACP? Have you had a chance to look into what they're building? I haven't looked at it too much, so I can't okay. speak super intelligently about it. But um, uh, yeah, Virtual's team obviously has done great things for the space. And uh, AIXPT was one of the really cool agents coming out of it. And yeah. Uh, certainly had some interactions with that agent, <laughs> which has been fun. Um, and we're actually yeah, chatting with them about also adopting our NFT standard because right now the ownership of that agent that you launch is still centralized. It's not a decentralized ownership perspective. Mm. Um, but ACP sounds really cool. I'd love to read more about it. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, look, um, if any of the Zero G Labs community members are watching the video, what would you like to tell them? <laughs> Alpha. We, we love you. <laughs> Keep supporting us. It's been a great uh, journey so far. Yeah, thanks for all the support over the you know, year plus. Uh, Testnet's been alive and uh, really excited about uh, launching together soon. Awesome. Yeah. Well, Michael, thanks so much for your time. It's a pleasure to have you with us in Istanbul. Guys, Thank that's you. all we've got time for today. Thank you so much for joining us and we'll be back here next time. Nice. Keep building. Yay. <laughs> <laughs>